My name is Vicky Munda Fatima, and I'm the president of Nagaland State Disability Forum. To begin, let me share a little bit about Nagaland State Disability Forum. Nagaland State Disability Forum is an NGO formed by persons with disability in the year 2014. Uh, since the inception, with the uh, Nagaland State Disability Forum, the state level body uh, fighting mobilizing persons with disability of all the districts, uh, mobilizing and uh, to bring them under the umbrella of Nagaland State Disability Forum to fight for the rights of persons with disability in Nagaland. Let me brief out the purpose of today's press conference, which is about the manifesto for and by citizens with disabilities in light of the general elections 2024 envisioned by Nagaland's, envisioned by National Disability Network, NDN, National Committee on Rights of Persons with Disabilities, NCRPD, together with the national organizations, with the Nagaland State Disability Forum, would like to apprise our intending candidates who are representing our state, Nagaland, to hear our voices and address at the central level. Well, we are very grateful to our state government because we can see some changes, some de development taking places in our state. For that, we are very grateful. But then there's still a long way to go. And for that, we need to collaborate, to come together, to discuss, to talk more on disability, to make our uh, society a better place, a better living for all. According to 2011 census, the disability population of India is 2.21%, that is 26.8 million people. Our state, Nagaland, consists of 29,361. This is what uh, that we don't accept the figures because there will be much more than this because the coverage is not reached out to all or non-acceptance of disability. There are more than one crore PWDs, voters. I'm sorry, I'm using the terms. There are more than per, uh, one crore persons with disabilities, voters, registered as the Election Commission of India. The citizens with disabilities of India, including our state, demand that all political parties consider us part of the development agenda. The disability com community are being neglected in all sectors of life for so long. We no longer can wait and watch our rights being denied. Here are some of the key demands which we will highlight uh, accordingly. And the first, we have the budget allocation. Five percent budget allocation for uh, disability activities, which can be carried out for uh, training, workshops, accessible accessible constructions, etc. The second, health insurance. Health insurance, affordable and accessible health insurance policies for all per persons with disabilities. Here we have the challenges because the policies are not inclusive. Mm -hmm. the, the, the policy is not inclusive or the, because the persons with disabilities have the mobility challenges or accessibility, attitudinal barriers of the staff or the agents, high cost, high cost for treatment, lack of awareness for government insurance schemes, including Ayushman Bharat and the Nirmaya schemes. Thus, we demand all the political parties to introduce a health insurance schemes in line with Ayushman Bharat scheme for persons with disabilities. This is Ashe Kiba. I'm the General Secretary of Nagaland State Disability Forum. Uh, my friend has highlighted about uh, you know, our aims and objectives of this press conference. So um, I will also would love to put a little reference on that because it is important for us and we are really looking forward you know, for a better future for, uh, for the persons with disability, also in our Nagaland State, along with the nationwide. So we, the Nagaland State Disability Forum, is uh, holding this press conference today to spotlight the nationwide disability manifesto crafted by the disabled community. 
this demand encapsulates the essence needs of essential needs of a persons with disability, which any incoming government must address and prioritize. When we say must address and prioritize, we mean it. We, uh, the disabled segment of society, face consistent marginalization in all aspects of our life, including the electoral process. Of course, something is happening, but we are really looking forward that, that it can be done much better than this. Our voice are uh, disregarded and our concerns at, are absent from election agendas and manifestos. Therefore, we, the disabled community, are resolute in asserting our presence and insisting that our needs receive equal priority to those of other societal group. We are fighting for our rights and we are expected that all candidates and political parties in Naglen to recognize our demands. We are interested, they are interested with representing Naglen's voice at the center and we urge them to advocate for us, the persons with disability community of the persons with disability community as an integral part of a Naga society because we are not just a significant portion of the voting population. We, are, we also play a crucial role in the country's social economic development and GDP through our consumption of goods and services. Therefore, it's imperative that all political parties consider our demands and include us in their manifesto for their 24, 24 general election. Accessibility is one of the demands that persons with disabilities is demanding the nationwide. Despite initiative taken uh, like by the Accessible India campaign and uh, legal mandate, the implementation of disabled friendly infrastructure falls short. Restricting the independence and mobility of a person with disability in the community. We urge all the, all the political parties to ensure full accessibility of public and private buildings, products, services, transportation, and communication system within three years through the public-private partnerships. Also mandate accessibility as a requirement for all businesses and enact comprehensive disability inclusive guideline for app-based cap aggregators nationwide by 2026, integrating them into existing motor vehicle aggregator guideline 2020. The next uh, demands is so social security. Living with disability in India brings additional financial burden, which is also goes to the uh, Naga people out here in Nagaland. As many face exclusion from educational and employment opportunity, leading to greater uh, reliance of, on uh, welfare assistance. We call on the political parties to standardize the national social assistance program by establishing a one nation, one person standard of rupees 5,000 per month, direct benefits transfer mode, and removing indifferent, differing uh, month, monthly allowance across the state. Why we say, uh, you know, differing monthly allowances of the state is different state is, you know, having different allowances on this, starting from 100 to 3,600, which is an insult to the disabled community, actually. Also, ensuring the priority inclusion of persons with disability in social security schemes like PM Awas Yejna and uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act by all relevant ministers. And the, uh, the sec third uh, demand is social political inclusion. The Election Commission's recent guidelines for the political party highlight a lack of awareness regarding disability mainstreaming in society. We demand political parties committed to amending Article 15 on the Constitution to prevent discrimination against persons with disabilities. At all government level, for marginalized commit, uh, committees akin to the 73rd and 74th Amendment. Advocating for the appointment of, uh, of at least one individual with disability in nominated position outlined in Article 80 of the Constitution. The fourth demand is uh, about the uh, economic participation. Despite being uh, you know, employable, there are so many capable persons with disability who can be employed, but less than one person of persons with disability works in the top 
nifty companies and representing in uh, PSUs, that is uh, public sector undertakings, is very low. We demand political party commitment to ensuring in filling all backlog vacancies uh, across ministries and departments by 2027. In also, we demand to ensure introducing the access to work, incentive schemes to, for enterprise to facilitate the reasonable accommodation for persons with disabilities. And lastly but not least, ensuring inclusion of persons with disability in all entrepreneurship and skill development program under the Ministry of MSME and MORD, ensuring full fulfillment of four person reservation as per the RPWD Act 2016. I'm Secretary of Nagaland State Disability Forum and I'm from Terem. So, um, uh, my colleagues, uh, our president and the joint uh, the secretary, general secretary, has already shared some of the key demands that we have been putting up in the uh, manifestos. So, um, so some there are some uh, manifestos like uh, I still wanted to share regarding this, uh, which is climate change, education, sports, and gender. So uh, when we talk about the climate change, the climate change has, uh, has a huge impact on the persons with disability. Uh, these persons with disabilities are persons with disabilities are the people who are very much marginalized and they are the most sensitive sections of society in our uh, society, in our state or in our country. And also they are the first one to be most affected to be the one who, who is most affected when it comes to nat natural calamities or any disasters that happens uh, in the state or in the country. So <coughs> likewise, um, people with disabilities are disproportionately affected by this climate change. Uh, there are some various factors which, uh, that affect persons with disabilities. Uh, in this climate, uh, because of the climate change. The first thing is that uh, physical vulnerability. Persons with disability have a vulnerability physically, and these people face problems and issues well uh, during the evacuations, uh, during the uh, evacuations, during disasters, like floods or storms or even wildfires. People's, uh, people with or uh, disabilities who have a physical disability especially they face it they face the problems of uh, moving around uh, their mobilities they have the uh, problems with their mobilities to move around so they are the one who face the problems the most during the natural calamities or disaster and also uh, persons with disability have health risks so Due to climate change, there are different diseases uh, coming out in different forms, and then like uh, this, when it comes to the diseases or the germs or like any kind of uh, calamities or disaster that happens uh, within the state or within the society, people with disabilities are the, uh, are the ones who have uh, disadvantage, the most disadvantage to be affected by this. Uh, climate change which is happening like and causing diseases and other calamities this is because uh, persons with disabilities has or have already uh, compromised health so they are the ones who have the high chances to catch all those uh, sensitive diseases or like face problems during the during any calamities and also, because of the climate change, there are also uh, economic challenges being caused to persons with disability. This is because persons with disabilities needs and uh, their needs on uh, on their daily living uh, basis have to increase because of the uh, climate change. There will be uh, <coughs> disasters. There will be diseases. And for that to stand resilient against all those disasters and diseases in the uh, in the community, peoples have to 
ramp up their living standards by building a resilient living standard so that uh, they uh, stand against all those odds and also like uh, this all these factors uh, result into the high cost of living and then uh, we demand that the, the governments of the governments of our country or states look upon all these uh, all these things and also uh, persons with disability face social exclusions because of this uh, climate change so uh, this during during the disaster response or recovery uh, recovery efforts people with disability have very high chance of facing social exclusions or discriminations leading to further marginalizations and difficulty in accessing assistance we we do not have a separate department for persons with disability in the state and then when when it comes to the functions of uh, state disability commissioners she's all uh, she's all about her office, the commissioner office, is all about a monitoring body. So most of the time, what happens is that uh, when it comes to policy making, uh, since since the office is just a monitoring body, so uh, of course uh, the office get involved with the policy drafting, policy making, and all these things. The process, uh, all uh, the office get involved, but uh, <coughs> most of the time, since the the commissioner office is also under the social welfare department so the office function under the social welfare department so the major decisions the major uh, process what what has been done for persons with disability in the state are being uh, framed and done by the social welfare department we have already taken step for this uh, seeking the government our nagaland government to give a separate affairs of disability community in our state of nagaland state also because almost uh, most of the states in NR and especially the notice it's happening even the Assam they have a separate affairs we are li really looking forward for that also you know soon we will be functioning independently we'll have a different separate affairs because there's so much to do on disability uh, it's not just a small you know uh, sectors we have so much it's a vast uh, you know um, disability sector is a vast section to be looked after so we are looking forward for that the government will soon respond to us and uh, give us an independent actually in a, uh, to in the fully fledged independent body to you know speak for us and uh, fight for us when it comes to decision making policy making it's always good to consult the right persons the right persons because what, uh, whatever we decide or we make policy for persons with disability, without the consent, there won't be uh, that improvement or yeah. the, uh, the policy, it won't be effective. So it's always good to have the consent to, be, uh, to include persons with disability part of the decision making or policy making. That's what I want to suggest. So we'll discuss more further on that also. We will take some steps, but then right now we cannot assure you, but then uh, surely we will take some steps for that, for that to, to be implemented or to be done. Yeah, for example, we can come up with another round of a press conference on this, following up of this, or like a kind of rally, which we never do in Nagaland, but I think it's, we are at the peak now, we have to come to the front line, you know, coming in the front line, coming the, in the road, raising for our rights, we will take that steps forward, if necessary, if our voice are not heard, then we will take those steps in the future. Yes, uh, regarding this, I forgot the date, but it was in the month of December. We had a state advisory board meeting and uh, where commissioner was there and we have highlighted about that. It's the voice of a disabled community being raised there in the state advisory board meeting. And we, the Nagaland State Disability Forum, right after the election, we are submitting our representation again, following up of that. So, yeah. That is the next step that we are going to take. <coughs> Nationwide, we are using this as a disabled community. Yeah. For this, we have a survey survey on all the uh, and all the inputs of the entire nation has come up and at the end it come up with this manifesto so we will be going up with this nagaland tv sop manulaka awas watch us live on geo tv and on your television sets as well for dumapu viewers we are on channel number 994 in global chapter and kohima and mokokchong viewers switch to channel number 138 on hornbill digital for all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter.